centre. Accepting that I would need to train a driver and an officer in charge, which clearly would take a lot longer than the 40 weeks. But assuming I could do that, I would have them available to me for two to three hours contact time per week. So even if I could acquire that level of skill, we could never, never maintain those levels of skills. Therefore, and I'm in no way being disparaging to retain firefighters, because they do a, a fantastic job all around the country, but the quality of service you would receive would be nothing like that of their whole time counterparts. That is a reality. The other reality is, is that if we were to make West Kirby retained, we would have to assume a five minute delay from alert to mobile. The reality is that the fire engine from Upton would be on the station area within that five minutes. Thus, it is highly likely that the mobilising system would never select the retained resource to mobilise to the incident. You could view that we've got too many stations based on, the, uh, based on that comment. Not a view I subscribe to. As I say, I would not recommend the closure of any stations if we had any other viable alternative. Unfortunately, at this point, we do not. Move the slide on, please, Vicky. Just in terms of the, uh, the public consultation meeting, station mergers were viewed by those who attended as, uh, when I use the term here, popular, that's, that's probably not the right term to use in truth. They were recognised as being the most reasonable in the circumstances, accepting that there's nothing we can do that is going to improve our response times, which for me clearly is a fundamental issue given the fact that ultimately it is I that is held to account for your safety and the safety of the, the other 1.38 million people across Merseyside. Outright station closures were recognised as being the, the second least worst option. But there were three mergers that we identified, and uh, which, which are self-evident when you, you look at the age of our building stock. They are Upton with West Kirby and Greasby being the optimum location reasons which I'll explain as I move through the presentation. Heighton and Weston over in Knowsley and that would be Prescott would be the optimum location. For those of you who know Prescott that is by there's a big Tesco's by the old BICC um, with the Cables Business Park and in St Helens where currently we have Eccleston Fire Station which is by the old St Helens Rugby League Ground on Millfields and Parstocks Road which is uh, it's on the A49 on the way out of St. Helens to Newton Willows and the merger there would be a new station within St. Helens Town Centre, somewhere in the vicinity of St. Helens Linkway. In Liverpool the proposal is an outright closure of Allerton simply because we do not have two old stations in close proximity to each other that we could close to then build a new station. There are only two old stations at the town in Liverpool. One is Allerton, one the other is Aintree. For those of you who know Liverpool, Allerton is in South Liverpool, Aintree is in North Liverpool. Hey, Vicky, can you move on, please? In terms of the station mergers, then, the, all of the mergers and closures, and we have two consultations running at this time. That is on for here at Greasby and the closure of Allerton. They're all subject to public consultation. An individual report will be taken back to the authority. So for Greasby and for Allerton, that will be on the 2nd of February 2015. The most consultation has taken place. That was reported back to the authority on the 2nd of October. And my recommendation was that the merger was to take place based on the, the operational uh, the fact that that was the least impactive uh, measure we could take in Nosley and, of course, it doesn't just affect Nosley, it affects all the mercy itself. That's been approved and the authority now is in the process of appointing the builder and that will be considered by the Policy and Resources Committee on the 27th of November and from then planning permission will then be sought. So even if the authority, even when the authority has approved in this instance the merger, there is still a planning process to go through. And at that point, the residents of Prescott or Knowsley may well object 
to the fire station and planning permission may well be refused. And if that's the case, then we would have to go for the outright closure of Wiston and maintain Highton as the key station. Right? That is the consultation process in the sense from the authority, but we have no control then over the planning issues. That then is a matter for the local authority. We have secured capital funding from the Department for Communities and Local Government for the merger programme. We were required to bid earlier in the year to something called the Transformation and Efficiencies Fund. And there was a number of criteria that DCLG outlined that we needed to meet. One of the criteria was to co-locate with either other emergency services or other public bodies. It is recognised that there are financial efficiencies to be realised in so doing. Makes sense. You can see why that government would, would uh, require us to do that. We received the full amount that we bid for based on the strength of the bid because it met the criteria. The point I'm making is what is being proposed for Greasby and what's being proposed elsewhere is entirely in keeping with government policy. And to be clear, it's not policy that I make, this is policy that the government makes as our elected representatives. The funding therefore is secured in terms of the, the grant, because bear in mind this is one-off capital funding. I'll explain the difference between capital and revenue as we move through the presentation. Clearly we will take um, Prescott as the example, assuming planning permission is granted and we start to build. We would then, at the end of the build process, sell Heighton and Weston, and the capital receipts would go towards the expenditure on the new station, which is going to be based on the stations we've built over the last three to four years in the order of a, around £3 million. But that depends clearly on the site, and we won't know that until the final plans are, uh, are formalised and agreed by the authority. <laughs> Any balance will be met from the capital reserve, which means that we are not going to increase the debt profile of the authority, because if we did, that would have a direct revenue implication, i.e. it would cost us to then service the debt. It's like paying the mortgage. It's, uh, it's exactly the same sort of uh, analogy. What people and what everyone need to make clear here, what, what, what people need to be mindful of, a merger or indeed a station new build is not something that happens overnight. We are not likely to see construction begin in Prescott till around March 2015 at the earliest. That's all being well with the planning. That means we're not going to have a new fire station till 2016 at the earliest, probably mid 2016. Now because our budget is cut as of the 1st of April, we need to lose people because we can't afford to employ them anymore. But we won't have made the structural changes, i.e. we will still have two fire stations, not just the one. So the reality is, we will have run out of people long before the, the point of 2016 when the new station is built to actually staff the fire station. That is the position and truth that we are in now. That is not because we're not employing enough people we are employing too many, certainly more than we have the budget for, because we are a long way from catching up with the, the cuts to our budget. The issue that we have is, of the firefighters we employ, and as of today, it's in the order of around 780, should only be 764. We're employing more than we need. So we should never have fire appliances being unavailable. The issue we have is, of those people we employ, not all of them are fit enough to ride a fire engine. That's not that we have high levels of sickness absence, we don't. But what we do have is quite a high number of firefighters recovering from injuries and illness who can come into work but aren't fit enough to ride a fire engine. So that has the impact of meaning fire appliances are unavailable and shifts at a time West Kirby is unavailable. That happens now. That's only going to get worse as time goes on, for the reasons that I've explained. <coughs> the 
point I need to make is, and I tried to give example a little later on in the presentation, I've added some, just a couple of additional slides just to try to make a bit more sense of what's a fairly complicated issue around response times. What is for certain is if the cuts continue as they have, and there is nothing at all to suggest that they won't, then more outright closures in Liverpool were a land set and I'm afraid are inevitable because we don't have anywhere left to go from here on in. Can you move the slide on please with me, thanks. So in terms of the Greensby merger option, the new station is proposed on the Frankby Road site. At this point I will explain why that has come about. We approached our partners in Will, right, Will Council, as we did in Mosley, as we've done in St Helens, and we asked them to identify sites for us that were in their ownership that there would be the appropriate planning consent to build a new fire station. The only site in Greasby, in the area of Greasby, that was identified by Will is the site of the library and the children's centre. It is already a public building. And that is the point. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. That is the core planning strategy for Will in terms of planning. They, of course, own the land, therefore it is within their gift to enter into those discussions with us. And their officers are only doing what we are directed to do through government. It's only the same as what we're having to do. Will's financial challenges are no different to ours. If there were to be a new fire station on the site, it would have two fire engines. One would be hold time, one would be hold time retained. We'll describe again very quickly, that would be potentially the staff at that fire station, although not necessarily, on the second and third row today is providing retained availability. But we would recall in, in the event that the number of appliances across Merseyside fell to a predetermined point. That would be 13 fire engines. And they would then respond in and stand to on that appliance to increase the availability <coughs> of our whole time pumps. That would be whole time firefighters then on a whole time pump, rather than the community retained alternative I described earlier. There would be training facilities on site in the same way as they are at all of our other fire stations. The plans that are out in the foyer there when I think Julie you won't mind me saying you, you were there when we saw the uh, first saw the plans. My first comment is or was, why is there no tower? Right? There would be a tower. There is a tower on all of our, all but two of our stations, and that's in the process of being addressed. It would be the same as the tower that is currently at Upton. We need to make that clear. We would need training facilities. What I would say <coughs> is, is that the, the land available is... Uh, in truth, is far from ideal from my perspective. It would be a very small fire station, certainly one of the smallest that we operate. You could argue it only needs to house five people. It doesn't need to be big, and that's, that's true. But to be clear, it is not. this would not be a big fire station. It certainly wouldn't be anything like the size of the station at, uh, at Birkenhead. The dialogue that we've had with Will, and I cannot speak with any authority for Will for the reasons that I've made clear previously, is that their intention would be that any new facility would have an integrated library and children's centre. And the plans, the indicative plans at the, uh, in the foyer demonstrate there's two options there, clearly is the, the community centre. There is one option that would include the community centre and one option that would not. What I would say is, and I will make this comment, and to be clear, this is the view of Dan Stevens, not the Chief Fire Officer. My personal view is, I believe probably the best chance to maintain the library would be through an endeavour such as this, not necessarily on this piece of land. Let's, let's be clear about that. That is my personal view. And what I will also say is, and I'll, I'll take this opportunity now to explain the position. If there were other land made available to us, then I would absolutely take that ahead of the, uh, the library option. The issue we have is, and the land I'm talking about specifically, which would be 
most uh, optimum for our response uh, purposes would be put play towards the Sorgo Massey and the put play because of the, the Mels and the Hoyle uh, issues. The, the issue that we have is that is in Greenbelt and we would require to be able to demonstrate, assuming of course we could buy that land, and I've made the point before that its value has probably increased tenfold over the uh, over the last couple of weeks. Assuming we could buy that land, then I, I, I'll take questions at the end if you want to hold the point. In terms of the, uh, the 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 land itself, because it's in the green belt we would need to demonstrate exceptional circumstances to be able to achieve planning permission and for as long as there was a non-green belt alternative i.e. a library site we are advised by colleagues in will that we would not be able to demonstrate the requisite special circumstances the exceptional circumstances which means therefore that as it stands the fire and rescue authority would need to pursue any planning app, uh, application assuming that it, the the they went with the and I'll, i will be clear now and for the avoidance of any doubt and i think it's very important that i am honest with you all while i'm here stood in front of you as it stands and in the absence of any better or rather even less impact of operational uh, alternative, which I know doesn't exist because I've been doing this for 10 years now. And if there was one, and the risk of sounding in any way arrogant, which believe me is not my intention, I would have identified it before now, along with all my colleagues who, who let's face it, we unfortunately think of nothing else these days. I will have to recommend this alternative to the Fire and Rescue Authority because ultimately, and as I made clear at the outset, I, and I only, am held to account for the operational outcomes. I need to make that clear to people. What I will also make clear is, if I had a viable alternative, then I absolutely would recommend that ahead of this site. And what I will also do, and again for the avoidance of any doubt, is to faithfully represent the views of the people of Greasby, West Kirby and Upton because ultimately it is the Fire and Rescue Authority, as I've said, that makes the decision and not me. It is light and proper, however, that I am here to speak to you tonight and not the Fire and Rescue Authority because they have to make the decision and I have to make the recommendation. Therefore, I have to stand up in here in front of you and say what is clearly a, a very unpopular message and I recognise that. That said, I'm sure you, none of you would want me to stand here and say one thing to you now to do something completely different to the Fire and Rescue Authority. That's not something I'm ever going to do. Huh? Any new build is very unlikely to include North West Ambulance Service or Merseyside Police. Any station designed the way to be a station would clearly be designed to fit with the area and there would be interim facilities provided during any build phase so that's specific to the library and the children's centre the map up here is uh, that shows you the location I'm sure everyone here is, is aware of the uh, the site but what i've done is given the same presentation to everyone and there's people in west kirby or to, you may not necessarily be aware of where the site is we move on the slide thanks for the initial scope and work, and again to make the point, the reason why we have had indicative plans made is in request or from or in response to requests from uh, Greasby stakeholders saying, well, well, what would it look like? You can't expect us to take a view if we have no idea what it would look like. And I accept that completely, which is why that we had plans drawn up, which are indicative. They are indicative, nothing more than that. Okay. Any final plans would only be determined followed from authority approval and then a, uh, a planning submission. And as I make the point on the slide there, these are planning issues and this consultation is concerned only with the least impact of operational response outcome. Okay. 
So specific to the auction, and we are, we are nearly finished now, so I'm, uh, I'm conscious of that. I've been speaking for quite a long time. Move to one station, release significant permanent savings, so revenue savings, year on savings. 22 whole time firefighter posts would be removed from the establishment permanently as a result of this, uh, of this merger. That would save £164,000 and would achieve that through retirements. There would be additional savings on top of that in relation to the senior officer post that would come out. Because as you take stations out, you lose tiers of, of officers that sit, sit above that. The sites at West Kirby and Upton would then be sold. Obviously, there's the grant contribution from DCLJ and any balance would be back in reserve. So there's no increase in the debt repayment which is the point that I made earlier on. The alternative to the Greasby merger would be the outright closure of West Kirby. And I think the only realistic option we'd have then is to rebuild Upton in conjunction with Northwest Ambulance Service for the joint police and, uh, sorry, joint fire and uh, ambulance station. The point to make is before everyone starts clapping, that would significantly increase the response times to West Kirby, which is something for reasons which I've explained that I cannot ignore. As, as I said, I'm at the risk of uh, repeating myself, ultimately I would be held to account for any incident that occurred in that area that a delay, a delay in response that I knowingly would have recommended to the authority occurred. Okay, that's not emotional blackmail. That isn't child waving, that is the reality for, for me as the Chief Fire Officer. One thing I made earlier is the West Kirby Appliance, irrespective of whatever happens, I need to make this point clear to everyone, and I have done it in, in West Kirby, we cannot staff West Kirby now 24-7 all of the time. Clearly that will only become more acute as time goes on. So at the point at which the authority make the final decision, in order to best maintain the availability of that appliance, I will then seek to make that whole time retained. Okay. In terms of the incident date, and I make the point now because I appreciate once I start getting into the technicalities that this can uh, you start to lose people at this point. The first three bullet points are, are contextual as much as anything. I wouldn't get hung up on the fact that we've significantly reduced incidents. And it hasn't just happened by, by accident, it's happened through the hard work and endeavour of firefighters and their community safety interventions. There's been significant reductions in incidents over the last decade, nearly 55% across Merseyside, and up to and West Kirby have both seen falls. The fact is, there are still incidents that occur on West Kirby, Upton, the station area, so across West Will. Probably the, the, the more relevant statistic, if you like, which is why I put the last two bullet points up, are over a five year period, there's been two accidental fire deaths, one road traffic collision fatality on Upton's area, along with six other fatalities that we have attended and we've effectively done body recoveries uh, on behalf of the police. And one accidental fire death and one RTC fatality on West Kirby's area. So the fact is, even though the number of incidents is significantly less, the risk ostensibly is the same. You think about the simple risk assessment methodology, you have likelihood times severity equals risk. The likelihood in either area is what? Low, very low likelihood. The severity is five. It's the severe death, the severest outcome. So one times five, you equals five for both areas. And the risk is the same in, in, in that sense. Okay, so we shouldn't get hung up on the, the fact that we've reduced incidents significantly. Move on there, please. In terms of the response implications, and what we've done is try to keep this consistent and keep it simple. We've used the same 